Warning, the following content contains sounds. It has been shown that some sapiens of the Homo have episodic memory towards some sounds. Therefore, forming a bad reaction to certain sounds. Nevertheless, the sounds we use are only to mock actions and notions, which are, of course, ridiculous. We are not mocking the people who have them. No, no, no. Because you know in time, you may change what you do and change what you think. Having said that, this is a correlation sensation. A show where I talk about your mother's mammalian protuberances. Yes, yes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors, and textures, and smells. But of course, we will proceed to something more important. And now, welcome to Luke, where he's going to talk to Void for correlation sensation, regarding your feelings. Much better than all that philosophical mumbo jumbo. Look at what we have here. Another episode. How have you people been doing, huh? Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I, I don't know what you're saying because uh, that's not how this works, apparently. But um, I said I would try to get both John Papanito and Void recording with me on a three-way. You know, the phone three-way, not the other one. No, 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 no. But it looks like only Void is uh, ready to record right now, so we're going to be calling him. Beepity-poppity-boop. Hello, Void. Stop. Hey, how you doing? Good, hold on, I am plugging in uh, my uh, computer. Yeah, you're being recorded right now. You know that, right? What? What? Sorry, I got you on headphones now. I said, uh, I said we're recording. Oh, okay, okay. So, do you know what we're doing? Herophilus, right? Yeah, Herophilus. So, do you yes. want to hear my story? Yes. Have you heard of a place called a Chalcedon? No, where is this located? Bithynia. Zenia? Or Zenia? Bithynia. A Zenia? Bithynia. Bithynia. No, Bithynia. Bithynia, there we go. Yeah, close enough. So, as of uh, 5 30, 2020, Chalcedon, that was very rude. But I'm thirsty. You interrupted me with your uh, damn, uh, damn uh, pop. Uh, excuse me. Oh, God damn it. You're more filthier than my pants. As I eat my balls. You gotta get good in the meninges. Yes, exactly. So, as of 5-30-2020, this place that used to be called Chalcedon is now Kedikov. Kedikoi. Kedikoi. Yeah, Kedikoi. Was a town on the eastern coast of a Bespiros. Bespiros. In what is now called a larger overall geographic location of Turkey. Ah. Turkey. They named their country after a bird. I don't think that was the reason 
they called it that. Why else would they call it that? I don't know. Anywho, Britannica indicated that in the 600s BCE, it was referred to as the City of the Blind by some sapiens of the Homo. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a pretty oh. petty generalization made by those filthy retarded motherfuckers. Oh, yes. But there was no historically significant thing in the records of Chalcedon when Herophilus was born. The first okay. thing, or what? Oh, yeah, Turkey was named after the Turks, the uh, people. Oh, so, well, are they named after turkeys? Um, no. Huh. I have no clue. Oh, okay. Uh, Britannica wanted the reader to know after, you know, his birthplace and date of birth and their idea of when he died. Some people don't agree on when he died or where he died. Oh, yes. I remember hearing about this in my research because it was very fuzzy with the dates. Yeah. And he became a physician of Alexandria. Oh, yes. I remember that part. The first thing that the Britannica wanted you to know about that is that he performed dissections on human corpses in front of audiences. Yes. Was it it the criminals that were uh, executed and was that the reason why? Or he was able to? Yes. And there's more on that later on, but I want to go through this narrative. Okay. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I set it up a little differently. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is something, you know, people rarely hear of, of happening in the ancient realm. Because, you know, they thought, you know, the soul was trapped inside of the body, remember? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, there's that a train of thought. And what's the worst thing that could happen if you had a soul in there and you cut it open? It would escape it haunt you for the rest of your life. Oh, Hero Phyllis must have had a lot of ghosts. Spooky. They, they, does it remind me of that, the saying Da Vinci's place was haunted because of all the cadavers. <laughs> Pah, silly humans. Yep. So, not much is really known about Hero Phyllis's life. Multiple sources have confirmed that Herophilus completed at least 11 treatises, none of which have survived to the test of time. Oh, that sucks. And get this, while both Britannica and source number 5 recognize that Herophilus' work was inside the Library of Alexandria and was burnt in one of the many fires, Britannica said it was 272 current error. Then, Source number 5 said it was 391, 391 current era. Wow. So, there's a little, you know, discrepancy in the information. Oh, yes. I guess, uh, lack of records because of the, uh, was it the fire in Alexandria, uh, destroying the his, uh, history of it that happened? What? I'm sorry, what was that? No, uh, the, the fires at Alexandria is why we lost records of Herophilus, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. But they used other physicians, such as uh, Galen. Oh, yes, Galen. I wish I could uh, go back in time, you know, then uh, see what really happened. So, anywho, Chalcedon was part of Asian Minor at the time. I found no mention of a family members. And uh, out of all the several sources I looked, but I found out by my fifth source, they said, Herophilus took flight at a young age to go to uh, Asia, or not Asia Minor, but uh, Alexandria. I thought they, uh, didn't discover flight until, you know, 
really, really, you know, later on, you know, like the early 1900s or late 1800s. What's, uh, well, what's going on? Did they, did he actually go fly? I don't know. What? Why don't you know these things? I don't know. You're supposed to know. I'm not, uh, that's great to the story, and it's kind of a mystery to other people, too. Yeah, but you know who we are. Don't forget, Void. I know, Gork. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. So, do Where you... Or, do you remember Praxagoras? Of course. Uh -huh. The teacher of Herophilus. Yes. He's his other anatomist. He was conveyed as having contributed significantly to anatomy in the school of Aristotle horseshit. Oh, yes. But the way he contributed wasn't that bad. I mean, he differentiated between uh, veins and arteries. Mm -hmm. Yes, he discovered part of it, uh, the vascular system, right, and the uh, circulatory system. Well, here I feel it's noted that the walls of the arteries, if I'm not mistaken, are thicker than those of the veins. Yes, I was just about to say that. I remembered that from the research. And uh, once Herophilus began to practice medicine, he happened to do so while Alexandria was underneath the rule of Ptolemy Soter until the next ruler who was Ptolemy uh, Philadelphia. Oh, wow, quite a name. Why is this so important, you may ask? I'll tell you why, oh. I'm, I'll tell you why, oh, motherfucker. You're, you're a monologue, okay. What? Nothing, I love your monologues, they're great. You love my mother? No, no, monologues. I thought you're, you're asking a rhetorical question, so I was trying to answer. I'm like, oh, it's a rhetorical question. I need to shut up. No, 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 I'm asking you. Oh. Ah, oh, silly motherfucker, of course it was rhetorical. <laughs> okay. You can be, be a little, uh... What do you want to say? Rattle! Rectal? Yes. Back to topic. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So, these two pharaohs allowed dissection and vivisection during Herophilus' lifespan, like for 30 or 40 years. Oh, yes. This allowed him and one of his contemporary partners, Erisistratus, to perform dissection and vivisection. Britannica yes. didn't mention anything on vivisection, and what was mentioned about the vivisection by source number five made it seem like they didn't really believe it, even though several physicians repeated the same things. Yes. At this point of time, um, this is where... Many would reasonably assume that uh, Herophilus scribbled his 11 little treatises, imagine, that held a lot more information than what is said about him. Since we're just relying on second-hand hearsay from uh, a few other authors. Yes, they had to do a lot of digging. And unfortunately, it had, I bet it had a lot more to do with the human mind than whatever stupid crap Plato and Aristotle wrote about. You know, the only thing I found useful from those two hooligans, mental hooligans, was that they uh, talked about the mind in the three different parts of it, you know. Hello? Are you there? Yes. <laughs> What are you doing? You picking your nose? No, I'm listening. You said three different parts. Yeah, you know, the baseline, the primal needs, and then you have the emotional wants, and then you have the willpower. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until much later when, uh, you know, 20th century allowed for fMRI studying to see the different localizations of these areas. 
But I bet if you went back through the evolutionary chain, you can see the deviations from the different evolutionary breakthroughs. So you could probably tell, you know, which area is most associated with what task, you know. Yep. Because it's the different levels of the brain, right? Yeah. One second. Is it? Or what? Oh, sorry. What'd you was say? It, was he saying it? These are instinctual levels, or there's an instinctual level, critical level, thinking level, or what was it? These levels are the same levels I mentioned. You know, the baseline, the primal needs, and then you have the emotional desires, and then you have the will. Okay. So the will is how much they can last, the emotional desires is their wants, and the uh, need is like shelter, food, and stuff over their head. Breathing. Yes. In heart. Is a baseline of, you know, primal needs. <clears throat> yeah. So, onward, whole bags? Mm-hmm. Whole bags away. Whole bags away. Throw them out. They get stinky. Yes. Source number five believes that this is the first systematic dissection of the human body. But uh, I'd argue that the Ayurvedic system of Hindu medicine would uh, prove otherwise with that Sashrut Samhita dude. Oh yes, the Samhita. And the Trahitas and all the other Hitas. Yeah. Even though it's shrouded in a mystical baloney shit. Yes. You know, they work their way around it too, you know. He let the body rot so he just scrape it off with a brush rather than using a knife. To get around those laws. Yep. You know what I think is interesting? What? The stigma around the dissection for the knowledge of anatomy is... Uh, well, the, cra the crazy thing is now they do it autopsies to figure out what happened. And so they can prevent uh, illnesses from happening and other diseases. Yeah. Tell me about it. You, uh, yes. you, you, you tell me more? Uh, I was done. What were, what, what are you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, you know, how they didn't have this positive view on dissection or vivisection, but at the same time, they get all excited when their warriors, you know, go ahead and chop off people's limbs in the battlefield. Oh, yes. Which I think is a little bit worse than having your body cut open and ripped apart when you're already dead. Maybe people, uh, I mean, it happens to everyone when it's unnatural causes, I guess. And also the mort morticians do it too, but to make sure to preserve the body for uh, cremation or burial. So, after a Vesalius' uh, time of being able to dissect and vivisect uh, many sapiens of the Homo, that certain allowance was not around until about 1800 years afterwards, with Andres Vesalius as the main one that they talk about in history. Now, do you want to go over what parts of anatomy Herophilus uh, discovered or found? Yes. Number one, cardiovascular system. So, although Alcamion of Crouton is credited for being publicly known to observe the deviations between what are called the veins and arteries in an unspecified species, Herophilus, as documented by Galen, as being the one who noted about the deviation between the walls of the two arteries and veins, like we said earlier. Then there is a schism amongst many who didn't even uh, dissect humans, except perhaps Herophilus' predecessor, Praxoras. Yeah, Praxagoras. You okay? Yeah. Huh? You, you, you here? Are you here right now? Yes, aren't you here? I'm listening. Yeah, but you're not, uh, you're not uh, talking much. There's no engagement. What are you talking about? What do you mean? I've been talking to you this entire time. So have I. Yeah, but I've been talking about this hero, Phyllis, dude. You been listening at all? Yes. Nah. -uh. <clears throat> no way. 
You ask me what I'm talking about. Well, I'm asking for more details for the uh, clarification for the listeners. Okay. So, Herophilus argued with many in his area that the atria was also part of the heart. Many people didn't consider it as part of the heart. Aristotle even considered the heart only having three valves. On set of four. Yeah, or however many there is in that thing. It's a I big gushy four. mess. What? Hello? Yes, yes. What'd you say? I thought there were four. I can look it up real quick. So, you know, a lot of people actually, even Praxor Praxagoras, um, didn't associate the heart with the blood pumping pulse. Oh, oh, this was the soul part you're going to talk about? No. The pulse. Just the uh, pulse. Uh, Herophilus said the pulse had to do with the heart, while his uh, predecessor, Praxagoras, said it was not. Then I thought oh. about how it's not that far-fetched if someone like Hippocrates thought the brain was like a bellowing tool to blow out the pneuma, oh. then why can't one think that the heart is a pumping machine, pumping the blood? Someone sleepy pool. You need a you need a some you need some crack. No. I got uh, I got uh, caffeine right next to me. Oh yeah? You you better start taking it. Tasty. It's like I'm talking to one of the corpses that Hero Phyllis dissected. Oh very funny. Ah uh -huh, yeah. That's what it's like over here. I'm like, hello? Anybody there? Yes. Like, where are you, Floyd? Right here, Gore. Are you okay? Yes. Are you just missing, missing to see my face? Kinda. I think you do. You missing human connection because you're stuck at home. Well, I've returned to work, but I have to be safe. Yeah, they put you in bubble wrap, right? No, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, keep distance and have people drop stuff off. Ah. So, the one last thing I want to note about the cardiovascular system. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Not that. It's that, that, uh, Britannica.com said, uh, Herophilus formulated a way to measure a person's pulse with what is called a water clock. You ever hear about the water clock? Oh, yes, yes. What is it? I don't know. Uh, I've heard it before, but are you, is it in the human body or is it actual water clock? I think it's a water clock. He used it to measure a person's pulse. Oh, oh. I think it was, took, it was a system that... Uh, Water ran through something, and they had certain pictures that took a certain amount of time. It's a very complicated system. Interesting. So, that's it for cardiovascular. On to uh, category two. Okay. Well, you know what comes from category two? What? Poo. The oh. digestive system. Oh wow. Both Britannica.com and source number five indicated that Herophilus named the Duodenum. What is that, you may ask? Why don't you research it, you bastard? Oh. It's the part. Yes. What? Oh, I forgot what a water clock is. It was a copper or clay thing. There was a big, huge cylinder, and it had different times on the links. So the closer times would go shorter. And the longer time, it would go longer. So it would start quick and get slower as it went. Huh. That's yes. interesting. Or, or sometimes it would be a droplet that went over a wheel. There are two forms of them. So basically it's like, oh, and it filled up, and then it, how long it took to fill up with the cone was it would drip in. And so it was a wheel, 
And so they put different wheels on it for different times of how quickly something would fill up. And we're like, oh, it's been this long, oh, it's been this long. And it's a big, huge, giant, upside-down, cone-looking thing. Huh. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm glad you looked that up. I had no idea. Yes. So, I was uh, saying something about the dual denim. <laughs> it's that part just after the stomach in the digestive tract. Where the, oh, pan so it's the, or what? the pancreas, yeah. Or the pancreas in the liver attaches to it. Mm -hmm. That's where the acid, you know, mush from the stomach goes in. Then the bio salts, and uh, that's formed by the liver to help break down fat. Oh. And then you have the bicarbonate, and you have the digestive enzymes to help break down all the things like all the macronutrients. And the bicarbonate makes it more of a, you know, a neutral acidity level. And then that's when it absorbs the fats in the vitamins A. D E N K. Well, so that's why so fiber is so important because it moves to, moves it through the body. Fiber also feeds a bunch. Well, soluble fiber. I think, uh -huh. I think it's soluble. No, insoluble fiber. Yeah, it moves down to the large colon and feeds the bacteria. Oh, so the healthy. Yeah. Next topic, number three, reproductive system. You know what, Void? Void, did you did you run away because I said reproductive system? No. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna go use the duck fat again. Oh no, Fardwa. Yeah, Fardwa. So. I was beginning to think if there was an award given out to the physician who did the best description of both male and female genitalia. I think a lot of people would have given it to Herophilus. He described the hollowness of the uterus, the uterine tubes in the ovaries, and also he speculated that the little spermatozoa comes from the testicles inside of the meninges. Oh, guess what else? What? He, dang. He's given credit for a top. Prostate. He discovered oh. the prostate. Oh, the ma or a lot of men have cancer. Guess what? what? I bet you a lot of men have already found their prostate many years before that. Ha <laughs> ha Okay. You know what I mean? Like the hoo hoo hoo. Yeah, you know, first the pinky, then the thumb. You stick it all the way up the bum. Hello, don't go away. Wait, yes. there's more. You might stick up your whole fist up that hole, you whore. Oh, God. You want to move on to the next topic? No, we can keep going. This is okay. It doesn't make me squirm at all. Oh, yeah? But you said, oh, God. Don't tell me you are getting no. excited. No. I was going to move on to uh, category four, the eyeballs. Oh, that's very important. Yeah. This has been summarized into one sentence void, but I will drag it on. Okay. Yeah, I'll drag it on the floor, you know. Okay. You know what I mean? What? You know, you know what I mean? What? I'm going to drag it on the floor. Oh, you're gonna scoot your butt on the carpet? Yeah. Need a new coat on the carpet. You're gonna paint it brown like that uh, Rolling Stone song? Paint it black? Yeah, yeah, I gotta cover up these stains on the carpet. So yeah, one source was talking about Herophilus making his way from the optic chiasm to the optic nerve to the eyeball. Oh, 
but I don't know exactly how they found that one out. He dissected it a little bit, you know. Yeah, he, uh, he said, we have the cornea here. It's like a clear lens on top of the eyeball. Oh, wow. Covering your iris and your pupil, which he described too. And then he described the retina, which is the first part where the nerve connection goes. With the sensors of the cones in the rods. With their okay. pigment that's reactive to photons. And seems oh. electrochemical processes through the nervous system. You know, it goes to the optic chiasm where it then crosses over. And then one book I remember reading a while back was saying more information was being sent to the eyeball from the op optic chiasm than being received from the eyeballs themselves, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> and the optic nerve. That's what that brings us to. Oh, my dad had detached retina once. It was scary. Yeah, that sounds scary. I don't think that would feel very good. Yeah, he had cataracts in both and had surgery in both, so he's okay. It's funny, he can see far away now because they replaced the lens. So it's far away vision, but not close vision. That's good. Yeah. I got to get the drink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god damn you beat me silly with that one Whoa. Excuse me. was that your dinner coming up no just uh, uh lunch whoa now on to the big one category number five Neuroanatomy, retivoid. Uh -huh. So the nervous system, all right? Not only did Herophilus get credit for differentiating between the arteries and the veins, but he also did this with the nerves and the tendons and the arteries and the veins. And then I looked up the word nerves. And guess what nerve really stood for? What? Tendons and sinew. So it shows that they were a little confused when they first started looking up nerves. Oh, because they got mixed up with tendons. Yeah, that and probably also they thought that the nerves worked the same way tendons and blood vessels do. You know, like polys and shit. Oh, okay, okay. No, even though it would send neurons electric uh, with that through the chemical mix of man. <laughs> Hero Phyllis was against the uh, current dogma about the cooling chamber of the brain, apparently because we like talking about Hero Phyllis and not Aristotle, that the motherfucking cunt. Why would someone write so many books on bullshit? Why? I don't know. I uh, left a time on their hands. You tell me, Void. Who do that? I blame him. It's not my fault I did all that wasted time. I couldn't have easily just looked up on googly tits. Whether or not Aristotle had anything worth talking about. Oh, yeah. Wait. They still believe he, when he got the ball rolling oh. and when you figure out something's wrong. I'm starting to think that it was my fault that I wasted all my time with that dude. Besides, Hippocrates knew that the brain was the center of the of mind. So did alchemy on. But then we have these philosophers who never did a damn thing in their life. Go talk about it. Hello, you still there? Yes. I thought you were going to continue, so it was like, yes. Ah, oh. well, thank you. Yes. What were you keep saying about the, uh... I totally just forgot. But keep going. So, like, rather than the bellowing idea that, uh, that, uh, Hippocrates postulated about the nerves and how the brain worked like a damn fireplace blower. Oh, yeah, the cooling chamber, yes. No, that's Aristotle. Oh, oh, sorry, again. bellowing the human, basically. Yeah, means. that's the brain for Hippocrates, where he thought the brain was where the pneuma was. Yes, what else did he say about it? Uh, 
Well, Herophilus and Aristarchus also worked together in Alexandria, and they're both credited with observing, you know, the difference between the motor and sensory nerves in the spinal root ganglia. You know. Then I was wondering, well, if they only did dissection, how do they know there was a um, difference between the anterior and dorsal parts of the roots? Maybe they just saw the difference. Well, then they would have been like Aristotle and just assumed. Right? I kind of go with everybody else who's saying that they did vivisection. You know, because also here of Phyllis is uh, noted for saying that once you cut one of those motor nerves, they are paralyzed. I wouldn't be surprised if he talked about how they could still feel. And that would be the main reason why you would be able to say you can differentiate between the two. Yes, I think I brought this up before, but uh, all this stuff always reminds me of when they put the camp on the guy's uh, root of his uh, brainstem. And he can't feel anything, and then after he takes it off, he feels. It's an inside joke when you reference about working with the brain with Dr. Frankenstein and young Frankenstein. Oh. I think because it was sort of those similar things. They had an old guy come and uh, do this, and he talked about the stem and all this stuff, and he, he did a reaction, you dirty bastard, I can't remember what he did, but he yelled at him, and he flinched, and then he stopped the flinch by putting a clamp on it. Whoa. That's interesting. It's not factual because it was just from a movie. Yeah. I think they I took I think they took real tests from the time and uh uh pontificated about them. Oh Pontification. So guess what? What? You know that the filthy Greek word meninges? Yes. Herophilus is credited with that as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, he, he came up with that term while in Thebes, or while in Alexandria, Egypt, right? <clears throat> while in Thebes, Egypt, there was a tomb somewhere with the Edward Smith papyrus with the original word, though at least the oldest known publicly document with the first word for the meninges. And Herophilus is given credit for it now. Oh my goodness. What the fuck that world we live in? I know. Small world, huh? Yeah. It is pretty small. Remember up on Kaplaka? Oh yes. Remember? We were like three times as heavy. Then we oh, would have yeah. been up here, and we were like jumping up. We we're like, "Wow, look, we can jump up like two feet," you know. And uh, you know, up there, you know, you can barely jump up six, you know, six inches. Oh, yeah. Coming here was certainly a trip. What the fuck? Oh, sorry, I dropped my ergonomic. Uh Mouse pad. Why you do that? Uh, it was, I was taking a drink and it fell off the table it was on. Ah. At this point, I want to uh, notify to the listener to go back and look at the Edwin Smith papyrus to understand more about the jokes on the meninges. Yes. And if you want to know the details, I talked about it in Edwin Smith papyrus episode. So go look at that one. I'm not going to tell yes. you. I am not going to tell you about the dura matter, which is the most durable outer layer, the arachnoid matter, which is the middle layer, and in the inner sensitive layers, the pia matter. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that the CF, you know, the cerebrospinal fluid is in between the pia matter and the arachnoid matter in the subarachnoid space. I'm not going to tell you that there's blood in between the arachnoid matter and the dura matter. Did I just tell them? God damn it. I just told him, didn't I? Yes. Oh, you let me keep on going. I know, but you're on the roll. I was. 
been stuck at home for a while. Oh, I know the feeling. Yeah. Anyways, so that cerebral spinal fluid is like this fluid that obeys your whole brain. Here, Aphilus is given credit for naming what are called the ventricles as well, which is also the, the spaces which have a cerebral spinal fluid in there too. They sometimes call it CSF, but they don't like that term. Oh. So, the, there are four ventricles, okay? There are uh -huh. the lateral ventricles, then there's the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. So right now you have holes inside of your brain. Hollow spaces. Oh. Yes. Where this fluid that's postulated to have lymph function and the cushioning function is bathing your neurons right now. Oh, wow. And the before, you know, before we get away from that, your, your CSF fluid is known to be flushed every night when you have a good night's sleep. That's why it's so important. It clears the crap. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, because basically it's not exactly toxins, but it's the used neuro liquids. Yes. <laughs> yes, toxicity builds up if they don't get flushed. Uh huh. So, the lateral ventricles, even though they're deep inside the brain, they're the most outside the ventricles. They're on either side, the left side, and the right side. And then they form together. They're also the most large ventricles. It's like just behind your temporal lobe, you know, on your sides. Uh -huh. yep. Then you have the interventricular foramen, which is the hole, by definition, between the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle, which allows the transfer of CSF between the ventricles. Yeah, you tell me. And then... It's an advanced system. Yeah. And then you have what's called the third ventricle. Which is kind of in the middle. It's the most... Most middle ventricle. Then that travels down. It travels down to uh, what is called the fourth ventricle. Leading to what's called the central canal. Which goes down your spinal cord. Yep, yep. So the meninges wraps around your spinal cord and brain. Then you have this hole that goes in to your brain and in through your spinal cord. And all this fluid in between there is always, you know, supposed to be moving around, transferring goo. Yes. Isn't it uh, when a person gets locked in syndrome is when their toxicity gets too heavy? Let me check that out. Never heard of it. I Good. know there's some sort of disease. Good thinking. So as one could guess, Herophilus easily made the differentiation between the cerebellum and the cerebrum. The cerebellum is like the miniature brain on the back to bottom portion, you know, the booty of the brain. And then the cerebrum is the most larger portion associated with logical thoughts. It's the part that most people associate with the brain. <laughs> Ugh, my microphone smells funny. Yes, and yes, you have to quit hunting scums. I need to start start to brushing my teeth more. Oh, yes. You know what uh, uh, wrestlers would do back in the day? They would have their raw egg uh, smoothie shake for protein, and then they'd put a little bit in their fish layer and mustache. So when they get close to their enemies, they'd blow the, blow the fumes of the uh, and their attacks to the breast with the breath would stink, and so it would be like, you say something nasty, and you just go like, like you're a terrible wrestler, and go, as they do it, they just have a reaction, so it could be more like a emotional things, because basically you're insulting them by saying they smell. Ah. You know what they also smell? Besides the breath? I don't know. It would be the cooling chamber idea, which, thankfully, Herophilus disputed and said, no, 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 no. Isn't that also uh, supplementation from the, it's actually the, uh, the, the circulatory system that cools us by sweating, right? And the glands? Well, it's more 
trickier than that, you know. You got the the autonomic nervous system. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the different nervous systems and controlling the temperature and all that kind of stuff. Uh, sympathetic opening up the uh, peripheral vasculature to, uh, you know, make more fluid come out. Yes. Then you start to sweating. You get hot and sweaty. And you start dripping all over yourself. Where was I? You hear all these sirens going on? Oh, yes, yes. Serious times, huh? Oh, yes. They enacted a curfew until 8 uh, p.m. So I can't go outside unless a pistol business or socializing. Just can't stay in the street. Scary. Us. So, I imagine if anybody was to just dig inside the head, you'd probably find out a lot of things that Herophilus found. Yes. You know, you'd find something like an optic nerve, which is cranial nerve number two. Then you would have found, you know, the ocular motor nerve, which is cranial nerve number three. Then you would find the motor division of the trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve number five. Then you'd find, like, the facial nerve which is another cranial nerve. And the facial nerve is cranial nerve number seven, while cranial nerve number eight is another one he found, which is the vestibulocochlear nerve. Lastly, but not least, we have the hypoglossal nerve, which is the 12th cranial nerve. Now you would say, I definitely didn't cover 12. Well, that's because, you know, Herophilus didn't have all the magnifications and the, the fancy cutting tools in the AC, or maybe... You know, not so many flies buzzing around while he's publicly dissecting and vivisecting, you know, criminals. Yeah, the maggots, yes, and the smell is probably terrible. Probably didn't smell too good. Uh-uh. I bet it was fed to the piggies afterwards. Uh-huh. There's also another part of the nerves, which have to do with your sinuses. And <laughs> boy... I looked it up and there's one named after Herophilus. I forgot the name of it though. For oh, one second. This part, there's a part of the brain that Herostato is given credit for naming called the Torcular Herophili, which makes sense because it has his name in there. It's like the point of the superior sagittal sinus where it meets up with the straight sinus and the occipital sinus. It's actually like this piece that's an intersection between all these sinuses. And it, it really, it all connects together on the back part of the brain. Then you have like the straight sinus that kind of goes up. You have the sagittal sinus that kind of goes up the back in the middle and wraps itself around to the front. And, uh, and it also has like... Uh, the occipital sinus, which goes down to the bottom back part and wraps around to the front of the skull. And it wraps itself around the brain from the backside for the sinuses. And they said it's a very highly variable structure between individuals. Much like all the dorsal and the anterior root ganglia we're going to find about about in the next few episodes. Are you ready, Void? Void? Yes. We're going to do all 12 cranial nerves, and we're going to talk about which ones Aristotle was credited for, you know, noting on. You don't, uh-huh. sound, you don't sound too excited. No, that's very, very interesting. Wait till you're sad because you don't get to see, you know, John Papanito. I know. I know, me too. He said he not busy. He said he busy right now. Yes. He said something about, you know, walking down streets with a picket or something. Uh huh. Yeah, he said something about life's matters. Oh boy. Oh, he not get in trouble. Oh uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I actually liked what the uh, Governor Ricketts said about the protest. Oh, what? He was talking about, you know, how most of the people for the last couple of days been doing it peacefully, but there's been some 
a few numbers of people that have been wrong, so they're going to have to shut it down. But at least he specified, you know, hey, you know, what's been going on is not cool. And this makes sense why you want to protest. And I don't have problems with the peaceful ones. But the rotten apples are hopping around and painting the town of brown. Exactly. Probably scooching on the cement with their bots. Hey, you see that one with the dude with the umbrella? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he said he might have been a plant. No, he was just a douchebag taking advantage of the situation. Maybe he was uh, a plant. Uh, you know, it'd be funny if his name was Milo. It wouldn't, I wouldn't put that past him. He likes to do stupid things. I don't think it was him because uh, they say he might have been a St. Paul police officer that was a nut job. Because they identified both his gear and his gloves and his uh, coat. Wow, we, you would wear that? Why would you, why would you wear your own uniforms or equipment? It makes no sense. Well, no, he had normal black coat on and uh, several tactical masks, and some were given to him from police, and some were his own and that kind of stuff. And they recognized them from his eyes too. Because his ex-girlfriend or wife said something about it. But it's still hearsay because we don't know who this individual is. But they were up to no good and they were trying to increase. Because that was actually the first place that the riots started. Like the actual looting started. Because he systematically broke the windows. So they definitely did start it. Not because of the cause. Wow. Hey, have you been hearing the new songs that the guitar player for Escape Ghost has been putting out on the end of our episodes, like, you know, several yeah. minutes long? Yeah, they sound good. Yeah. You know, I can't yeah. wait till they start, you know, practicing again and then going out in public and playing. Yes. Bars open tomorrow, but I still don't think it's quite safe enough. Ah, uh, oogity boogity boo. Yes. Come on, boy. I'm more afraid of that damn flu. That thing is way more scarier to me. Oh. Imagine what would happen without the immunizations. Oh, yeah. So many more people would have died. Oh. So scary. Anywho. Um. Yeah, you like us? Yeah, you do, because you reached this part of the podcast, goddammit. Right, Void? Yeah. They must like us, right? Yes. Yeah, we're talking about you. Yeah, you make a Twitter account. You make an Instagram account. You uh -huh. follow Correlation Sensation. Uh -huh. Come on, do it. It's not hard. Yes. I might talk to you, too. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways. This is a new one from the guitar player of a scapegoat. Void, what do we do? Uh, we listen in awe. Oh, I was going to say we leave in peace. Oh, we leave in peace. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.